Good evening. This is Magic the Interviewsening, your home for the quest for ancient secrets and trade secrets, and your number one source for Magic Interviewsening. I'm Ruben Bressler, and I'm here with Hall of Famer and American Swedish Kibbler Brian Kibbler. Brian, thank you for joining me. My pleasure. Talk to me about your recent testing for the Pro Tour. Uh, well, I uh, ended up testing for the uh, the Pro Tour in uh, Montreal with the usual test group, uh, you know, LSV, PV, you know, Ben Stark, Efro, etc. Uh, testing went fine. Uh, you know, we obviously did pretty well. Three members ended up making uh, making the top eight. Uh, personally, uh, I you know ended up playing a Naya deck um, that was a, a bit different from the one that Efro played. I had mana creatures, uh, Huntmaster, and and such. Um, and I ended up going six and four in constructed, and uh, ultimately fin finishing in 80th place. So not great, but not embarrassing at least. Along with professional OK Cupid grinder John Finkel, you won the prestigious Game of the Year trolley from Magic the Awarding for your semifinal Game Four at Pro Tour Honolulu, in which Galvanic Blast, Whip Flare, and Innistrad Wolf Token played central roles. So congratulations! Here is your award. Oh well, thank you. Do you uh, do you have any do you have any words prepared? Do you have a do you have a speech? Uh, I I actually already gave my speech live when when I watched it. Oh. And I watched I watched the the the, I, the award show. Unfortunately, and I, I I didn't hear it because that's how computers work. Oh, weird. But um, since this is a split award, what I'm going to do is um, uh, split it in half here. So oh, we're okay. just going to okay just tear this. Do I, I I get to choose which one I want. I would uh, want my my yeah, names on this one. Yeah, and if you so. could mail this to John. Yeah, absolutely. That would be that would be great. <laughs> you are only one of eight players to have two Pro Tour titles to your name. What's it like knowing that King of the Nerds contacted Charles Gindy over you? That's, that's a little surprising. I actually think that they, they contacted LSV as well, like a couple years ago when they were first pitching the idea of that show. But uh, maybe I don't, I don't come off as nerdy enough. It's, it's really sad. Hmm. And now you have your own token. I do. Congratulations. Thank that's you. very exciting. You are the red token in the series. Are you planning on playing more Thatcher's Revolts as a result? Uh, probably not. Uh, I mostly just alter the tokens to say wolf and then make them unblockable. Mm, nice. You are nicknamed the Dragon Master, a name you earned by placing third at Pro Tour Chicago in 2000 with Rith the Awakener. You have also publicly stated that your favorite creature is Knight of the Reliquary, and your favorite planeswalker is Elspeth Knight Errant, with whom you've been photographed on multiple occasions. Do you think this sends mixed messages on the subject of knights versus dragons? Uh, well, I mean, I think that knights and dragons should really come together. Like, if knights and, and dragons, you know, would stop fighting each other, they could really, you know, beat all these you wizards hippie. out there. That is so... Uh, that's just a political answer. It's non-committal. <laughs> We're at war, Brian. You've got to pick a side. I mean, I, I did. I'm, I'm with the knights and dragons. Which side are you on? It's both sides. Yeah, but, but there's, the, you know, it's knights versus dragons versus Jace. I'm on knights and dragons. Okay. I think we can all agree that Jace is on the side. Exactly. Of the right, enemy. Fair enough. Darby! You're a member of the 2010 Hall of Fame class alongside Gabriel Nassif and Bram Snapplecaps. When you returned to Magic in 2009 after a long hiatus, you made making the Hall of Fame one of your stated goals. Now that you've achieved that, what other goals do you have left in Magic left to accomplish besides best all-time hair? And as a follow-up question, are you intimidated by Joel Larson? It, he, he does, he does uh, pose a challenge to that particular title. Uh, but uh, on the subject of titles, you know, I, I'd like to win another Pro Tour. You know, I may be one of you know, only a handful of people with, uh, with two wins, but uh, having three would, would make it you know, me, John, and Kai, and that's pretty good company. What guild were you hoping to play at Grand Prix Charlotte? Uh, I was hoping to play Orzov, and uh, that's what I'm doing. So can't complain there. What is the best combat trick in Gate Crash? Uh, it's definitely Gore Clan Rampager. What do you think are the top three decks in standard? I think uh, I think Naya midrange sort of aggro, uh, probably more similar to the one that Efro played, uh, is you know very good. I think uh, Jund, uh, similar to the one that that Owen Turtonwald made top eight with, is an excellent deck. I think Esper is also very good. Uh, I don't really know how to uh, evaluate the the Aristocrats deck even after it won the Pro Tour. You know, it's not something I have all that much experience with, other than losing to Tom Martella and Paul Ritzel. So. In your opinion, do you think that Bloodbraid Elf was worth banning in Modern? I think Bloodbraid Elf was banned mostly because it's the least popular kid in the room. Um, you know, people wanted to see Jund taken down a peg because you know they were just it was just everywhere. Um, I, you know, well, I don't necessarily think that Bloodbraid Elf was even the best card in Jund. Um, it was sort of targeted because it was a card that uh, you know could be banned without seriously impacting too many other decks. So you know, I don't think Bloodbraid needed to be banned, but I can see why it happened. What's the most fun deck you've ever played? Most fun deck I've ever played? Um, 
I really liked the uh, the Oath of Beasts deck that I played at Grand Prix New Orleans in like 2002 or something. You know, before most of the viewers were born, I think. Um, but uh, it was it was an Oath of Druids deck with Ravenous Baloth, Croson Tusker, uh, Visara, Living Death. It was uh, a format where Blue Green Madness was very popular, and you could almost never lose to them. And you got to you know Living Death, eight beasts into play sometimes. <laughs> so it was pretty sweet. You were the captain of Team USA for the World Championships at Gen Con and came up just short of the top eight in spectacular fashion. What did that experience mean to you? And as a quick follow-up, what's it like having a central part in the greatest gif in the history of magic? Well, it's, it's sort of like this. That's, that's pretty much the whole experience summed up in a one motion. Sure. But, uh, but no, the, the, uh, the, the, the World Cup was awesome. Uh, you know, it, was, it was great to you know, have a chance to you know, play on a team uh, you know, with other, other members of you know, the United States, really, and have you know, people all across the country really cheering for you, you know, as a representative thereof. Uh, you know, it was uh, unfortunate how things ended, and uh, you know, I, wish, I wish LSV and I, you know, in particular, could have done better. Uh, you know, we, were, we were carried by uh, Joe Panaccio and Alex Binek, really, you know, who did a great job uh, you know, coming out of the qualifiers. You know, so, you know, unfortunately, you know, they drew the bonfire and it didn't quite turn out what we might have liked, but uh, hopefully I'll have a chance to get back there. You have had success with trading card games other than Magic, having won the inaugural Versus Pro Circuit event in 2004, and as one of the lead designers of the World of Warcraft trading card game. When are you going to grow up and play poker like every other Magic player? <laughs> I actually did play poker for a while. Uh, I was a you know, sort of semi-professional poker player toward the end of you know, sort of the last time I was playing on the Magic Pro Tour. Uh, ultimately, I ended up quitting poker because I just got incredibly bored of it. Um, it was something that you know, I wake up every day, and the only way to keep score was dollar signs. And it was really unsatisfying. Um, and you know, now that I you know, make and play games for a living, as weird as it might sound, that, that actually feels like something that I'm doing that has a positive impact on people's lives. You know, when you're playing poker, you're just taking money from people because you're better at making decisions than they are. But you know, the, the experience that I have when I see someone playing a game that I, I made you know, and having fun, it's just, it's just awesome. As you mentioned, today you work full-time as a lead designer for the Ascension deck building game. So when people ask you, are you Celestian or Gruul, are you tempted to reply, that depends, are you lifebound or Mechana? <laughs> I'm probably, personally, I'm more, I'm more you know, lifebound than anything, but uh, lifebound's kind of like Celestian. If you, you know, you, you, they both like trees and you know, group hugs and stuff. Yeah. I think of myself <laughs> as enlightened. Generally, I mean, I do have a degree in philosophy and religion, so enlightened is probably a good choice. I'm not sure how many people identify as void, but... Yeah, probably, probably you know, they're nihilists. Yeah. You know, it must be exhausting. They believe in nothing. You are also one of the minds behind Soulforge as part of Stoneblade Entertainment. Does this mean you're now contractually obligated to play Stoneforge Mystic in all of your legacy decks? Uh, no. Okay. <laughs> Message received. And lastly, if you signed and sold your tiger hat on eBay, how much do you think you could get? Uh, well, I wouldn't do that. You know, it was a gift from a friend, and you know, also has you know great sentimental value now. Um, but I would hope it would be in the realm of a billion dollars. That's a lofty goal. It's a valuable piece of memorabilia. It is quite. It's also valuable. very fashionable. It's a probably quite warm as well. It, it is. You know, I, I, maybe I should have brought it to Montreal. Yeah. I could have used the help in the tournament, and it was very cold. You are one for one in tournaments in which you wore the tiger hat. That's, that's true. So. I'm also undefeated while wearing a suit on the Pro Tour. True. Obviously, the hack would be tiger hat and suit. Yeah, exactly. I always win every tournament while going undefeated. Well, Brian, thank you for not blocking me today. Yeah. <laughs>